Welcome to Carolina Sculpture Studio. My name is Clinton Button and I'm a granite sculptor. Welcome to video number 128 of the Virtual Stone Carving Apprenticeship. All right, I'm going to start with a little different lesson today. Um, <laughs> I wasn't going to put this on, but I thought, yeah, I might as well because maybe it'll save somebody, you know, from having to get another one. In the past, well, let me show you what I got. Check this out. So when I walked into the studio a few minutes ago, the mask is on the floor. And I've already pulled the cord off. I wasn't going to show you, but I'll, I put the straps off. Picked it up. You see it's pretty well wrapped. Somebody's been down there just having a blast digging away and throwing stuff in it and trying to bury it and whatever. So that's no good. I'm not going to put that and breathe through those now. I saved the straps and I'll hang them up and maybe I'll need them again. Put that in the trash. Let's talk about this for just a minute. You know, I forget things. I'm sure y'all forget things too. And uh, I've had a couple times when I couldn't find my dust mask. You know, I take it off and the thing about being one person shop is that when you stop, if something comes up, like if somebody walks in, you know, and says, hey, Clint, just wanted to check things out and see what you're working on. I got some friends that stop in pretty regular and see and take pictures and love to be around the studio. And my wife comes down and tells me I got a quote that came in or a call or somebody that wants to talk to me and whatever. So you get it or something breaks, you know, I'll, I'll go through a chisel I need another straight chisel and I go get a chisel and for some reason I've lost track and now I don't have any straight chisels left and so if I gotta have a straight chisel it means I gotta stop and make a few and uh, that's not as common but it happens or something breaks or something falls apart or whatever something has to be dealt with and I go walking out and I, wherever my mask goes I don't know sometimes I don't keep track of it like I should and uh, then I got to look around, retrace my steps, and it's in the wood shop, or it's up by the welding table, or I put it on the seat of the truck, or whatever. But there's other times that I was pretty sure I left it right where I was working, and couldn't find it, so I mean, something happened to it. Well, what happens to it is, you know, I don't have a closed studio. I got three walls, and then I got, you know chain link doors that you know it's not a it's not a lock it up perfectly secure studio and uh this time of year you know fall's coming on um we're apt to have a raccoon once in a while come through and uh when i was moving stuff and cleaning up in the studio one time in the lower bay moving things around uh i found one or two of my dust masks all ripped to shreds. They were down there underneath stuff. So I assume that's what happens. Uh, don't know that a possum's gonna bother that much. We have possums around, but um, they're a whole different different animal. I don't mean that in a, as a pun, but they're, they're very different behavior-wise. So anyways, um, so I've usually got at least one extra mask, uh, but to address that problem with them getting into my stuff, got an old, it's like an old lunch pail, just an old tin, and I pop the lid off and I hang it up right there and I put my mask in at night. Well, if you get into a habit to protect stuff and take care of stuff and maintain stuff, and then you stop doing it for whatever reason, you get reminded why you had to do it in the first place. So. Me just leaving my dust mask sitting here on top of the stone just cost me a mask. So now I gotta go, you know, pay 20 or 40 bucks or whatever and buy another one. So, you know, a little bucket like that that just cost a few dollars is a lot cheaper than buying new masks. So, um, but this is why I like to buy masks and filters that um, I'm not buying one that's on a discount somewhere. I can buy one that I can go right down the street here to Northern Tool, just you know, a few miles from the shop if I need to, and I can just buy my pink P100 filters. These are, see, they're P100 
they're uh, the best you can get and have my face piece and I can have my dust mask immediately and I thankfully I didn't have to go buy one today but um, you know that's what happens you're not taking inside every night you know there's there's some tools that you know I take up every night like a pointing machine or whatever I just don't like leaving them out in the humidity and I don't want anything to happen to them any other way but um, you'll get complacent get into a good habit of maintenance and then get slack about it and you get tutored so um, make sure to take care of your gear and uh, pick it up and put it away and put it where you want and I'll take that out of the trash can there I threw it in you know I'll probably take it up and throw it in the regular trash can so as to not encourage anyone to uh, root through my trash and find stuff they like to chew on or slub on or whatever um, I'll keep my extra strap you know off of that one that didn't seem to be damaged so I'll go wash it really well and I'll hang it up because you know if one of these breaks it's worth having a spare instead of throwing it out so, um, but <laughs> now I can start carving. Live and learn. Okay. I want to show you some stuff here. I'm shooting the tip of that feather. See the red right there? Now, we got a bunch of considerations that we're down here at the bottom near the plinth. And so I want to go over a few of them with you. This is develop it and release it and open it up is going to be more prone to damage while we're carving but it's going to be the most prone to damage as it's being handled when we stand this up to carve it and lay it down and to transport it and carve it to do all this different stuff and then when we when it's installed it's going to have to be stood up one last time now it looks deceptive because this is skinny but see we've still got another inch of bevel so it's still pretty healthy. It's going to be five inches. That's the plan. But to shoot this point, we either have to invert one of these tips on the compass. We have to we have to accommodate because of the way the sh tips are shaped. That the point doesn't. It, there's a lot of interference with that outside shoulder. Now, talked about that before this is when you get into having to be very careful about how you approach it now if we we're going to have the plinth at the original level okay this is the this is the correct plinth line in terms of the actual plaster that's where everything would end but we're going to extend it down to here we're also going to sink this face back an inch remember you got to go back an inch inch and a half because we're clearing up these chips along the front of the joint as we develop this, if this was going to be the original one, I hope you can see I've got a groove cut, a channel cut right here. And that is so that as this compass along the side here, as this compass comes down to approach it, it doesn't deflect it. See, I can turn it because of the way it's going and get that point, and it doesn't. It just barely kisses that edge. I've got just enough clearance that it doesn't cause this to deflect and change my measurement. But I can't go very deep because see how close this is to what this plant line is. Now this is irrelevant because we're going to go another inch down here. So this isn't as big a deal. But you're going to have places where it's, 
<coughs> where it's important to not erode material because you're very close to something. So if you're not confident with that, just take your screw loose, take the nut off, flip this arm around, or use a straight arm you know, that's got a straight tip. It's the nice thing about these compasses, you can have them in a variety of, of shapes. I've got a few that are straight, they're pretty blunt, and I don't usually use them. Um, because you can if you're careful you work with them and it's all right but this had to just barely clear here in order to come down to make this point so now you can see how close this is to the actual edge this you know where we've got our eight inches the feather's going to be hanging over like it is on the model it's right there but then we've still got another inch to go down so i'm hoping we're going to be able to that's why i left this beveled a little bit we're going to be able to carry this feather here and carry it down and just just to make this not be square it's going to come out to this line but just to have a little bit of material in this last inch to break this square corner here the other part about this plinth that's really critical now is we have to be 100% focus that we're never going to cut this into a straight square edge and cut a nice line in there because if we put a square straight sharp line in there it's going to create a stress riser and that's just going to pop right off to the break uh, so uh, we've got to make sure that we keep we'll, we'll work on keeping it uh, we'll probably put a small radius in there to try to have that look very close to being square but we don't want to cut it square and then mark it with a chisel to make it make a really sharp line because what that's going to we can erode up to it but we don't want to cut that line down the middle you know if we, if we took the chisel and went one way and then went this other way and worked it down until we had a square edge that was left that'd be safer than taking a straight chisel this was round and cutting down and cutting a line in there to where there's a line because that line will break. And so you got to really start thinking about that because we can't in introduce that into the work anywhere here, especially around this plinth, because it'll, as we handle it, it'll tend to make it break. Now, this feather is, is way out. Our drapery goes in a little bit more here. Um, you know, we're into this area for our drapery. Um, we can we could probably mark that. Now I have cut these points. Remember we're going to stretch your lower portion an inch. I decided to go ahead and cut these and get this in place, develop this curve where everything that's going to be stretched can be stretched. But I'm not pushing them back one at a time because I want to keep them all together. And when we put this all around, we'll work on, I'll try to mark out where her this is her, where the top of her knee is, up here. And then we've got her leg goes down. And then where the reverse is, everything that's, that's on the upward, I think I'm going to go ahead and start contouring that. And then we can eyeball this part as we stretch it, but we'll just move this whole, the shift, this whole thing down to make it flow well. Um, instead of trying to go exactly three inch of an inch here and half an inch here, five eighths here, and three quarters here. That gets a little too formula formula related and isn't necessarily what you want to do. You want her to look natural. And so if she's all got legs that are a little bit longer, it's fine with her. But uh, now we've got that whole feather edge laid down. We'll work on some of this drapery. We'll probably point the tops of, of the fabric as this shows, but then we'll have this extra material and they they won't be an inch back. And even if they are, we're going to have a straight shelf like this to where we can carry this over. So it should look pretty good. And we'll leave ourselves room to, to be creative with it. All right? Be careful about preserving material because that could easily go gone into that plant if that was the last, if this was actually going to be the plant. But it's not. It came out great. All right. Back to the heart. I'm at a good point to change saw blades. And I wanted to show you, remember we talked about this blade earlier because it was starting to thermal. Remember I told you I overheated it a little bit? 
and had a couple of couple of spots. This one in particular, and still, I don't know if y'all can see on the back side, but this one's still a little black compared to the other ones. And this side, I've pretty much worn them off. But if you look, unplug it before it gets exciting. If you look at this edge, can you see how skinny that diamond is? I mean, we're down into the 16th of an inch range, how thin that is. And that's got a lot to do with how careful I was to not wreck that blade. I got it hot at one point and you know, yeah, you can just put another blade on. They cost like 40 bucks a piece. They're not cheap. And so, you know, this is about making them last. And so this blade, you know, you have to replace the screws cause you'll run the faces off the screws. And I like the hex socket Allen wrench ones better because it's a little easier to get a bite to get them out. Um, my arbor is still okay. It's some of those screws are a little stressed, but I think I'll be able to get them out okay. But if you're very careful, even if you start to thermal a blade, if you slow down, and the important part is to keep it square. You keep it dressed on your grinder, and that costs you grinding stones, green wheels, whatever. Get your green wheel going that you sharp your carbide with, and zzz, crank this up and run it and true it while it's running. Um, you know, and if you're not smart enough to do it, don't do it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to tell you, um, this is the kind of thing that'll, you know, if you get this dug in too deep to a grinder and you got two grinders going, you're talking a major catastrophe, explosion, disaster, um, and you're not going to be wearing enough safety gear to just laugh it off. So if you don't feel comfortable with it, you know, err on the side of caution and get you a new blade. I keep my blades dressed because that's the way I was trained to do it. And we dress them on, on the grinder. And I, you try not to do it too much because it just gobbles up a green wheel. You go through a green wheel really fast dressing wheels. But when the diamonds, when the wheel gets really out of true, and it's not nice and flat, and this is rounded, um, I'll dress it and try to keep it square. The more square this cutting edge is, you know, like, like that, the more square and flat it is, the more accurately you can use the saw because if you have a round, a rounded edge, it's going to tend to drift one way or the other and it'll pull your cut and then you won't have control and then it can cause problems with trying to fix it and heat it and the blade will flop and sometimes they break and that's really bad too so um but i was able to be careful with this blade after i thermaled it keep it sharp and not thermal it worse and was able to wear it out now i'm down to the point now that it's really it needs to be taken off because it's so thin i've only got just a couple cuts left in it. and if i dress that and square it it's very round right now, and if I square that, there's not going to be any blade left. So I'm going to put a new Disco blade on. And these Disco SX200 accelerator blades are the only diamond blades that I use. I get them from Miles Supply, the, the Osaka, Kyocera, whatever diamond blades we used to like, the small ones. They don't make them anymore, really sad, really miss them. But this is, in my professional opinion, and I don't get them for free, I don't get a discount. It's the best blade on the market. It's the only one I want in my studio. But you can see the difference. I've literally worn that entire thing down to, an eighth of, to a sixteenth of an inch or less. Okay, be careful, it'll last a long time. And, uh, but be safe, all right? back to work when you use these allen headed screws you just go in when like I went I think the fasten all you can go on the internet you look up what size your screws are let me look and see if it, I've got the lid yeah I got the lid in here okay these particular Ones are an M4 7 by 14, okay? And they're a tapered.
they, they're for a counter sunk, and then they've got a socket head in them. You know, it takes an Allen wrench. And they work so much better when you, when you buy these blades, they come with four new screws, okay? And the four new screws are for a Phillips screwdriver. And what happens is that as you, I save them all. They're just, these are, these are the original ones. They're for a Phillips. And as you, as you saw and grind whatever with them, you, you wear some of that head off and you lose a lot of your contact area because uh, where the screwdriver can grip and it can make getting them apart really tough. These you can take your Allen wrench and you gotta hold the screwdriver in there while you twist it and it ramps out. And once they ramp out a little bit, it's just, a, it, it's pain. It's, it's an aggravation, um, everything. And so I don't like to use them. When these come out, I throw them away. These are worn, I can't use them anymore, they're junk. Um, so don't get them mixed up. It's, it's not worth saving them, but you can usually get enough of a fit because this hole is cut straight down, it doesn't taper in. And when you lose the taper on a regular Phillips screw, and you lose that outside edge of the taper, you lose a lot of leverage, and it really makes it hard to, to get these screws out. So, and uh, this adapter is almost shot. I think I can use it for this one, but I think then we've got to discard it because we're right down to the bottom. But the whole point is that it still, it still functions. Yeah, see, these aren't stressed as much. The other ones are pretty thin. But you can turn them right out. You gotta be careful because they can be really sharp when you, you know, get them, they get worn down. But this is a four inch blade, okay? You can put bigger diameter blades on there. Um, I don't, I don't, you just need to be consistent. If you change from a four to a five, four and a half, whatever, and you buy two or three different sizes, what's gonna happen is you're gonna end up forgetting what size you got on there. And you're gonna be used to handling the saw in a certain way uh, especially if you don't have a guard on it. And you can drill these blades, okay? If you've got somebody, if you've got set up, you can put these and drill these holes in a regular hardware store blade, but they need to be countersunk. See where those are countersunk? And making a jig isn't that hard. You know, you can do that. But these professional blades come already drilled for a flush arbor. Um, but if you change sizes on your blades, what's gonna happen is that you will become accustomed to where you can have your knuckles or your hands as you're working. And uh, I'll tell you, when you get close to this blade, if you get on it, it just cuts a groove. It doesn't cut you like a knife, it cuts a slot out. And it takes a long time for those slots to heal. So um, you're better off to not do that. But it's so much easier to tighten these blades in and I'll go opposites and I'll snug them down to where the countersink can locate them. And then I'll go back through and tighten all of them. Um, but do yourself a favor, forget about the Phillips screws that come with them and uh, um, use the other ones. Uh, you know, I don't know why more companies, why they don't sell them like that, but I've changed that years ago, and it's one of my preferred upgrades, and you can tighten the blade more easily. Now, usually after you run this blade a little bit, you're going to have to go back and tighten them up because it'll heat and thermal, and they'll set just a little bit different, and you'll have to go back in and tighten them down. But try to, you know, keep them square, don't strip them. And then after you put it all on there... Plug your saw in. Set it where the blade can't, you won't drop the saw. And then just. Run it 
to make sure that the saw blade doesn't wobble at all because if you've got this off center it'll tend to flop around and you don't want that so i've got one that's starting to wear through so and uh i think i'm going to go ahead and just get a new arbor and swap that out it's as i've tightened it it's bulged a little more take this off you got a spindle lock here on the top and then you should be able to just turn it and that'll spin right off okay and i'll go grab another one off the shelf because i keep extra ones here and uh but I'll always get a brass one the aluminum ones no good they tend to gall really bad they'll they'll mud up your stone um and they the screws stick worse in them and the steel ones leave steel in your stone and then it rusts and so if you're up against something and you'll end up with a stripe and it'll rust like crazy you don't want that either all right i'm gonna go get another one and swap it then i'll be done along with my flush garbers i've got a bunch of these all come in your grind grinding wheels and they're bushing so you can bush your shaft out so the wheel fits tight and you know, you don't go through them that often. You can reuse them quite often. But uh, I try to keep several where I can find them. And I've got at least two more brass uh, adapters, mounts. And I've got an aluminum one and a steel one that we got in a buyout somewhere. And, uh, but I wanted to show you. Can you see how far that's worn? compared to a brand new one. Okay, that's what that's for, is that this is sacrificial. So I'll put this back in the pile so that, you know, if something happens and I'm, you know, up against the wall and I don't have any left, I've at least got one junk one that I can get a few cuts out of. Um, but I'll have to pick up a couple more. And uh, um, I try to keep, I've got some in another container with some of the old ones. I'll keep that where it needs to be, but then we'll have a whole thing. But these are, um, this isn't something, I don't know who else outside the granite industry sells these. Uh, I've been to some of the countertop shops where they do a lot of, um, you know, cutting with granite. They, they have wheels like this, but they all end up with the nut on top. And they, when I asked them about a flush mount, they'd never heard of them. So, um, it's something that you've got to get. Make sure you're not plugged back in. It's something that you've got to get. Just snug it on. You don't have to put it on with a crowbar. And then we'll mount the new wheel up and it'll be ready to go. But you got to get these from... And these new ones will be tight to mount on there. And uh, But they've got them at Miles and I you know, assume Granite City Tool and some of the other suppliers have them. Um, mm -hmm. But I always get mine from Miles Supply. So, along with my disco blades. All right, back to work. Mm -hmm. Working into this drapery now with the feather. Now down here on the very tip of the drapery. I did take this caliper and reverse this end so that when I measure with it, it's arched towards it, so it gives me a lot better clearance. So got a nice point there. I'm going to start working across the bottom of her feet, and this is still going to be, you know, an inch high, but we'll have good drapery there, we'll have good volume in between. This being an inch tall here, an inch tall here, we've got a lot of opportunity to carry this over and, and pull it to the front. Um, what, you'll, what you'll find is the old work did it as, as as a flourish, you know, you'll see uh, a figure that's got a, a, a boot protruding, the toe of the boot protruding off, off the stone or whatever. And it, it used to be a matter of 
a great cost to do it that, that way. And now you'll see some raised carbons on really low quality jobs just because it's a fancy thing to put on there. And, but the rest of the quality of the carbon just doesn't make you go wow because they got rubber and added or whatever. So it would be nice to have an ex enough extra stone. And even though I wasn't planning on doing it, it's going to save this stone because these chips on the front were pretty serious. So um, by, you know, <laughs> taking lemons and making lemonade, we're going to have a lot fancier stone. But I think this video has probably got enough time on it already, so we'll wrap it up. My name's Clint Button. I'm a granite sculptor here at Carolina Sculpture Studio with a virtual stone carbon apprenticeship. Thanks for coming in.